All right, so my my OBS pr uh, recording program shut down. I don't think it's gonna disrupt any fluidity to the play posit here. But let's go ahead and look at this example. So this is in your Delta Math or it's on the problem set, however you're wanting to work those. But when we're reading these scenarios, these are the things that need to come to mind, okay? So it says a survey conducted by Black Flag asked whether or not the action of a certain type of roach disc was effective in killing roaches. 79% of respondents agreed that the roach disc was effective. The number 79% is a what? Okay, so <clears throat> we are going to identify each part of this. All right, so we are, what is the population of interest here? It's not actually very clearly defined. So sometimes it might be easier to, um, to start with your sample and work backwards, okay? Because it actually tells us a little bit about the sample that they use. So it said 79% of the respondents, okay? So the sample is the respondents, okay? Who probably purchased the roach disc. Okay, so we can uh, write this for our example down. So then you can say problem one on the problem set. So the sample respondents who purchase the roach disc, okay? So that means the population has to be all roach discs that are purchased, right? Uh, the opinion will say, or uh, yeah, we'll say the percent, uh, no, not percent, we'll say um, all people who purchase the roach disc. Okay, so we, we wanna know for all of them how effective it's been, but we can't ask everyone. We have to ask a sample of them. So it doesn't tell us our sample size. So if I, I wish that this problem actually said the uh, you know 30 respondents or the 50 respondents, but uh, we assume they have some set number of respondents in there, okay? So 79% is the number of interest, and it's either going to be a statistic or it's going to be a parameter, okay? Now, this 79% is describing the respondents. So the 79% is describing the sample. And if we go back to our definition of what a sample or what a statistic is, it is a number that describes some characteristic of a sample. So that 79% is a sample. Now, which one of these is it? Is it a sample mean or is it a sample proportion? Okay, so we're gonna add this to our notes as well. Uh, we're gonna say proportion is shown as a percent decimal or fraction. And when you think of the word proportion, it should make you think, oh, it's a fraction, right? So in this case, right away, as soon as you see a percentage, you should be thinking, oh, this is gonna be a proportion. And this 79% is the, um, the statistic is the 79% who uh, agree that the roach disc is uh, effective, okay? That is what that is. So our answer on this question is going to be B, okay? But let's talk about the parameters well. So this would be the percent, okay, or the sample proportion. And I'm gonna actually add that, or sorry, I'm gonna add this here, sample proportion. This is population proportion of people who agree that the roach disc is effective. Do we know what that number is? We don't, okay? But with their sample, this company, the survey company, Black Flag, is trying to get a good estimate, right? That's what they're trying to do. So uh, on your Delta Math, you can confirm that, you just click statistic and you'll submit and it should be correct. Now on a lot, all these questions, by the way, just remember you get three tries. On the third try, if you miss it, you miss it, okay? 
and hopefully by then you'll have your answer figured out. So reach out to me if you're if you're missing any of those. Let's look at question two, and this will be the, the last one I do for this uh, situation. We're going to uh, copy and paste. Uh, we're gonna ask the same exact questions as we did uh, here. So let me copy this. And uh, we're gonna ask the exact same questions about this scenario. Again, this is number two, uh, 2008. Uh, New Hampshire Democratic primary, 30% of, oh, hold on. Okay, so 30% of, of voters in a CNN poll said they would vote for Hillary Clinton. Surprisingly, in the primary itself, 39% voted for Clinton. Okay, so we have the same questions here. All right. Uh, so this is the New Hampshire Democratic primary. So we can fill these in. We're trying to say, what is the number 39%? Is it really what we're looking for? Is it a statistic or is it a parameter? Because you're always gonna pick one of those for these values that are in here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to either, we're gonna define the population or the sample, but the population is, is pretty straightforward. It is people of, or we'll say residents or citizens of New Hampshire. Citizens of New Hampshire. Okay, the sample would be the CNN poll. A poll is a survey, so the CNN poll of respondents. Okay, that's gonna be your sample. Okay, so one of these percents describes the sample, one of them describes the, the, uh, the actual, what the population actually did. Okay, so we'll notice that the 30% is describing the poll. So we'll say 30%, this is a, uh, a P hat, okay? This is the sample proportion, okay? <clears throat> of uh, voters, all right? And then the parameter would be the 39% which is the population proportion. What's it? We call that P. <clears throat> P voted of voters. So in this case, we actually can see both. The 39% is what actually happened, and the poll itself was trying to predict this number. That's what uh, that poll is actually doing. Okay, a poll is meant to help predict the outcomes. Okay, and that was a big like uh, they always try to do this with elections is they try to um, predict who's going to win. That's why some a lot of times um, they have the they'll have polar or pollsters at the actual the voting areas and they'll ask people as they uh, as they leave who did you vote for and they can make a pretty good sample to predict it. Now there's oft, sometimes there's errors with this and they're just way off, which happened in 2016 with Trump versus Clinton. Um, but this is the idea that we're trying to, to get at. We're showing how a sample can help us predict these outcomes. So in this case, the 39% is the pop, uh, parameter. It's describing the population, but uh, the question wants to know the number 39%, it is a parameter so you would put a for that one okay parameter and you'd submit now there's two other questions over here um, you're gonna I think number three is based on that probably have to get some more practice with those because I think number four is different uh, number four is based on bias and variability okay so number five you can actually talk about uh, parameter and uh, statistics okay oh it's just definitions so this is our definition that so you can use your definitions we wrote down on this screen to answer uh, number five okay so let's talk about these examples here we say that um, a sample is supposed to predict the parameter and we've talked about our parameter in our situation we go here uh, for our scenario here, we said the parameter is the mean age of all U.S. pennies. The statistic is the mean age from the samples of pennies. 
So that's what we ended up doing on this slide or what we ended up showing. Every single one of these dots that make up the sampling distribution is representing a sample of the sizes on the right side over here. They're all individual X bars. And so each of them represents an estimate of, let's look at this red line here. This is our parameter. So the red line is the parameter. And uh, you should have this in your notes, by the way. Let me actually add this. This is, um, I need to make, I want to insert a text box. Oh, no, there. So this is our parameter. Okay. The value that describes the population. This should be the true mean age of the pennies, right? And then we're using each dot. Each dot is a statistic. So I'm going to draw on this. We're going to draw a line. So this is a statistic. One of you in class or the in-class learners found that as a statistic. And we're trying to say, does this statistic estimate the parameter? And if you look at this dot that I've singled out, it doesn't. Okay. But if we go down here or go down to the bottom, let me, uh, let me copy this. Okay, if we go down here, you'll notice that on average, most of the points do a better job. So this is somebody's statistic, and on average, most of these points are doing a better job of estimating it, okay? This is because increasing the sample size reduces the variability, okay? So we're gonna talk about sampling variability. So go ahead and write this in your notes, please. Uh, write sampling variability, okay? And we're saying, how can X bar, which is, uh, which is all of these the little pink lines, right? How can those be good estimates, accurate estimates of our mean, okay? Different random samples are creating different values. So what happened was everybody grabbed from the population, right? Everybody grabbed from the population and we all got something different, okay? Uh, and we're always gonna have this, this variability and you see it up here, there's tons of variability in the first one. It gets less variability in the second one and less variability in the last one, okay? So <clears throat> what we're gonna uh, talk about with this variability is uh, how, to, how to reduce the variability. That's what we wanna talk about. So we're gonna jump ahead to here, okay? The variability of a statistic me, uh, we're actually going to write this definition. Let me undo this. We're going to write this definition. Variability of a statistic is described by the spread of its sampling distribution. I'm going to make these bullet points to make it a little bit easier to digest. Okay, we're going to write all of these. Okay. So the spread is determined mainly by the size of the random sample. And it says larger samples give smaller spreads. Okay. The spread of the sampling distribution does not depend much on the size of the population as long as the population is at least 10 times larger than the sample. That's that 10% condition uh, that we're talking about there. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. So we're going to pause and, and you're going to write this in your notes. Variability of a statistic. So I'm going to uh, pause this. All right, so I added um, one more definition one more part to this, the variability is represented by the standard deviation of the spread. So now I'm gonna pause it and we're gonna write that down, okay? Uh, when you're talking about variability, how do we describe that with a number? Well, we're gonna use standard deviation and that's what we've been using to describe the spread of data for um, for a long time and that's part of the song. Uh, the standard deviation, it describes the spread of data. How should we define it? It's the average distance from the mean. That's that song that I sang uh, in class. So when we look at uh, these graphs here, which one has the lowest standard deviation? Well, that would be the bottom one, right? Except for these two points here, which I'm still very suspect of. It's almost unbelievable that they're that high. Um, but, you know, crazy things happen all the time. Um, but the, the standard deviation, this one has the smallest standard, standard deviation, thus the small, lowest variability. And that means it's the most trustworthy data. 
and that's because the sample size was the largest of all of these. And this will always happen for every sampling distribution. The larger the sample size, the smaller the standard deviation. That's gonna be, um, let's actually add that as well on our notes. So I, keep, I keep writing things. The larger, we'll say this, larger sample size equals smaller deviation. All right, I think that's been said plenty of times in here, smaller spreads, larger samples, smaller spreads. We just want to make sure that this, is, that this is very well understood. It's very important for the next several chapters, actually, that we understand that. Okay. And I told you, standard deviation is one of the most important aspects of this class and understanding what it is. Uh, so, and, and again, it's coming up right here. Okay. Let's look at a uh, question in the problem set. Number 15, and of course this is on, on Delta Math here, if we, you know, you go to it, see the problem. Uh, so it says to reduce variability of estimates from a simple random sample, you should do what? To reduce variability, to reduce standard deviation, that's the last bullet point we just wrote, you use a larger sample to do that, okay? And then we're gonna look at number 16. Here's a question where we're going to uh, talk about the uh, the larger sample size. So it says, if we took a simple random sample of 1,700 people from California, that has a population of 34 million, and a simple random sample of 10, or 1,000 people from Detroit, which has a population of a million, which sampling distribution would have a smaller standard deviation? Okay, so even though this has 34 million and this has 1 million, that doesn't actually matter at all. That actually has does not matter in the least bit, okay? It all depends on how big the SRSs are, okay? Who, Which one has the higher simple random sample? Well, that's California. So therefore, whichever one has the higher sample is going to have the smallest deviation. Uh, if we were to, oh, whoops, close that. If we go back on here and look at this, we're seeing that it as this increases, it never stops getting smaller if you increase the sample size. So from 1,000 to 1,700, that's a lot of people and a larger sample, it does get smaller every single time. And we'll see that with uh, more, more simulation examples. Obviously, we're not gonna take those large of samples with these pennies, okay? So for this one, we're gonna say that this sample has to have a smaller standard deviation. So let's see which one is saying that. Uh, this, so it's not gonna be Detroit, so it can't be A or B, okay? It needs to be California. It's not gonna be both, they're not gonna be the same, okay? And it's because of this. It's not because California has a larger population, it's because the sample size is 1,700, which is larger than Detroit's 1,000, so it would be C on there. So that's how we're making sense of this, okay? Now, we're gonna talk about the last part of this. The red line and the blue lines, these are to represent how well the distribution actually estimates our uh, distributions. So that's what those are there for, okay? So we said, which one does the best job? Well, it's the bottom one because it has the least variability, all right? I have a term, another term that we're gonna uh, define. We have this term called unbiased estimator, okay? And uh, you're gonna write this down, and it's, it's described like this. A statistic used to estimate a parameter is an unbiased estimator if the mean of its sampling distribution on this is equal to the true value of the parameter being estimated. So I'll let you, uh, I'll let you write that down, I'll pause this. So you've written that down. Let's go back to our example here. So this statistic at the top, is it a bias or a bi unbiased estimator? Well, here's the sampling distribution. Did the mean of the sampling distribution equal to the true value of the perimeter? So basically, is the blue line up here equal to the red line? No. So this is a, and I'll, I'll write on it, biased estimator. Can I even spell that right? <laughs> oh, no, I can't. This is a tragedy. There we go. Okay. 
I'll save that just so I don't have to embarrass myself. Now, these down here, the red line, the parameter, and the blue line are pretty much the same. So we would call this statistic, any of these really, it doesn't matter, although Evan's way up here are kind of way away, you know, but the overall distribution is, is going to line up pretty well. This is an unbiased estimator. So this is something that we're gonna, we'll be looking at again as we, uh, as we go through uh, more examples. But that's the main idea. Is it a biased estimator or is it an unbiased estimator, okay? That's, uh, that's what we're talking about with this. Uh, and so you'll notice that with a larger sample size, we can rely on the information more. There's less variability, so it becomes more unbiased. It's more correct the larger the sample size, okay? Uh, so we're also gonna add that to this. We're gonna say larger sample sizes, or we'll say SRSs, or we'll say random samples, sorry. Yield unbiased estimators. Because it's just gonna be more true to what the actual mean is, okay? I mean, it's just that's just how it's going to be, okay? Uh, we see a lot of variability, possibly a lot more bias in this than we do down here, okay? Now, what happens if the actual parameter is this green line, okay? All right, what happens, so this was the, the third scenario that we saw. Uh, what happens if that's the case? That means all of these are bias. And what what could that actually mean? So if the green line is the true uh, parameter, then something was wrong with our sampling. Sampling is what causes bias. If we don't sample correctly, well, what are some issues? What could have caused some bias in our sample? So we're gonna make a new slide uh, and we're gonna say, causes of bias, okay? Well, what do we know about how these were sampled? Well, I already preset the bag. So the samples were not random. No. So ideally, you would want to have access to the entire population, and you'd want to be able to sample from every penny in the United States. But that's obviously impossible for me to do as a stats teacher. Uh, so I had a bucket of pennies that I bagged. And even when we do that, these samples were not random enough, okay? Um, the samples were pulled from a bucket, not the actual population, okay? So I had already made my sort of a miniature population of the pennies and, you know, that bucket did not get any pennies from 2020, right? Like it in March, I did this last year, but in March I didn't add any more to it, okay? There were no more pennies added to that bucket. So, um, it's, uh, you know, there is bias to the fact that uh, this bucket is its own miniature population. So we're actually gonna say that the bucket is a miniature, or I'll, I'll say this, an inaccurate is actually better, population. Yeah, my spelling, there we go. <laughs> The bucket is an inaccurate population, the bags that were created, right? So not only were the samples not randomized just enough because they were preset in bags, you'd want to be able to access all the pennies in the population. But if one student had a bag of uh, 100 pennies on their desk, the other students were guaranteed not to get those. So there just was a lot of non-randomness here. And the sample, the popular, the bucket didn't have any pennies from 2020. Uh, just because it's not, I didn't want anybody bringing in pennies uh, due to COVID. So there are biases here. So it's very likely that these are not accurate. Okay, they might be close, but they are not accurate in any way. So that's the idea that if the green line really is the true mean age of the pennies that exist, then 
um, then all of this data is actually biased because we didn't sample properly, okay? That's, that's where all the issues come from, okay? Let's look at an example and then we'll be done. I really like question 11 here. This is pretty much exactly like what we're seeing on, um, in our, our notes example here, the, this right here. Uh, the line itself at the bottom represents, it says, uh, below are the dot, uh, dot plot values. I'll actually pull this up on Delta Mass. So this is number 11. All right, so it says, below are the dot plots of the values taken by three different uh, statistics in 30 samples from the same population. Okay. The true value of the population parameter is marked with an arrow. So this right here, let me, uh, let me actually draw on it. This would be either mu or p, okay? This is either the mean or the, the proportion, all right? So the statistic that has the largest bias, so which one of these is the most biased? Well, it, bias comes from when the, if we take the center points, blue lines, one is not matching up the best. So let's go on here. All right, I'm gonna draw red lines. The center of these distributions seem to be about right here. They seem about the same, right? But the bottom one actually seems to be shifted over quite a bit. So these seem to do a good job, but C seems to have the most bias because most of the data is shifted to the right compared to where this actual arrow is, okay? And <clears throat> we have these others. So A and B have similar bias but it's not larger than, than C. C has the largest. B and C do not have similar bias, okay? Because B does a pretty decent job of estimating it, whereas C does not. So really the best answer on this would be C, okay? Then the follow-up question is uh, for this is talking about variability. Look at this problem. You're saying which one has the lowest variability? Really, which one is the least spread out, right? Okay, that's that one, and that's the other topic we talked about. And then what's this last one here? Based on the performance of the three statistics and many samples, which is the preferred as an estimate of the parameter? Well, you want the one with the lowest variability uh, and that has the least amount of bias, okay? All right, so that's gonna be it for this lesson. Uh, if you have any questions about these, let me know. I'm gonna start adding more of that problem set in here as I get more time to do so. Uh, so just make sure that uh, you've got you start working on that and ask questions if you have it if you miss a question once or twice send me an email and I can help uh, talk you through it